everyone welcome to today's current affairs session of civil speedia the topics we are going to see is bid in 1 leprosy seela pass gst council and with respect to editorial topic is competitive populism bid in 1 bid in 1 is a most isolated dwarf spheroidal galaxy that has been recently discovered by hubble space telescope this galaxy has been 30 light years from the milky our milky way galaxy Apart from that the speciality of this bid in one galaxy is it is the oldest galaxy in the universe and it ages of 13 billion years and it is acting as one of the living fossils in the universe and apart from that this why this galaxy has been called as a dwarf galaxy is first one is it was small in size and it extends only for 3000 light years and it has very low luminosity that is it exhibit very low light in emissivity and apart from that it lacks dust and old stellar population so that it is called as a dwarf galaxy and the next topic is leprosy a leprosy is a chronic disease that is caused by the bacteria mycobacterium leprae and it was first discovered by hansen so it is called as a hansen disease apart from that this disease will affect all age groups from the child to the older age and the average incubation period of this disease is 5 years so that it will be very tedious to identify this disease because its lifespan is little longer period and the other hurdles that has been associated with leprosy is the first thing is the social stigma that makes many people not to register that leprosy disease to the national register so it is very tedious to identify how many people have actually have affected by this leprosy disease and apart from that the major reason for this leprosy that is prevailing in india is this high population density and this poor sanitation and very poor nutrition status of the people makes more people of the indian society to be vulnerable to this leprosy disease and through the physical contact and it is easily contagious also so it makes many people high population density makes this leprosy to be spread at a much faster level in india and the initiatives that has been taken by our government to handle this leprosy diseases first is active seeking mode in this active seeking mode the health workers has been utilized as a tool as a major national disaster health management officers so they will go to each and every house in the villages and they will handle they will examine each and every people whether they have any symptoms of this leprosy disease or not so this is known as this active seeking mode mode and apart from that the next one is this who's global strategy that is on the three based on based on this three pillars first one is this action how to initiate this action that is the first and ultimate need of this global strategy of who then second is how to make more people accountable to this system so that whether there was properly curing the disease or there is any progress in this nature of handling this leprosy disease or not so second thing is this accountability of a disease people and third one is this inclusivity because much and more the poor people is vulnerable to this leprosy disease because of the high population density of their living in the slum areas make the people to be much prone to this leprosy disease so to have inclusivity means more vulnerable people has to be included in this national database of this leprosy so that they will handle the people the management people health management people can handle this leprosy people at much faster level and apart from this we have initiated this national leprosy eradication program which was one of the successful thing that made india to be declared as a leprosy free in 2005 that shows that there was very less than one case has been registered for every 10000 population but there was recently there was sudden increase in this number of cases that has been reported in india under this leprosy case so that shows that we still india need to take much more steps forward to handle this leprosy disease and among the indian states seven state has been remained as a hot spot of this leprosy disease and the top 3 among the seven states are this bihar up and maharashtra and this who has targeted that zero children with leprosy and deformities by 2020 and apart from that it put a target of that is less than 1 million less than one people has been registered for this newly diagnosed disease for this 1 million people population so that only this leprosy disease will be handled much more faster level and the next topic is sila pass this sila pass is a high altitude mountain pass that is located in this uh, arunachal pradesh between this tawang and west kamen district so recent news with respect to the sila pass is there was laid a, our pm has laid a foundation for put a sila tunnel which longs for 12 kilometers that will give a all weather connectivity from this assam to this arunachal pradesh especially this tawang and common districts and this will tunnel will be constructed by bro that is border roads organization 
and the major impact of this feed tunnel is it will seal out tunnel is it will give increase this defense preparedness in the border areas especially this much more prone area of this arunachal pradesh where this china's encroachment is very high so this will give increase the defense preparedness in this border areas and apart from that this road seal out tunnel will give connectivity much more connectivity thereby it will increase this tourism and other economic activity that is based on the tourism so that it will have a check and balance whether this china is encroaching into arunachal pradesh will be curtailed at much faster level if more tourist people started to enter into this tawang and kamang districts so it is one way it is productively engaging the people of this Ta tawang and Kam kamang district people to get more economical gains and another way it will benefit the india as a defensive manner because more people tourist people started to enter into area that shows that it is comes under this indian terrain because china is also claiming that arunachal pradesh as that their, their own terrain so this dispute will be solved when more and more tourist people started to enter into that area so by having this tunnel is one of the major impact of this northeastern states and apart from that it will have a major impact on the infrastructure of this northeastern state also so it is one of the important thing with respect to this northeastern infrastructure and the next topic is gst council the article 279a deals with this gst council so recent news with respect to this gst council is there was a 32nd meeting has been conducted and the changes what has been analyzed in this 32nd meeting is first thing is there was increase in the turnover limit for this composition schemes for the goods for up to the financial turnover of 1.5 crore rupees so those who small entrepreneurs that having this turnover up to 1.5 crore they will get this the increase in this turnover limit exemption for this composition scheme of goods and apart from this the suppliers of service will be who has the financial turnover for rupees 50 lakh for the preceding year will get a tax rate of 6 percentage and apart from that the major thing that this council has talked much about this composition scheme only and they have made a compliance simplification for this composition scheme that will make more and more entrepreneurs the small scale entrepreneurs will be get much benefited by this gst council and apart from this, this council has aimed at revenue mobilization for this natural calamities. For that, they have made introduced approval for this levy assess on this intrastate mobility on the Kerala at the rate of 1% for the next two years to handle the calamities that has affected the Kerala last year. And apart from that, this has made a higher exemption for the threshold limit for the suppliers of goods to be the turnover limit of 40 lakhs or 20 lakhs. This the central has said that based on the state's opinion only this 40 lakhs or 20 lakhs will be put as a threshold limit exemption for the suppliers of the goods and apart from that the last topic is this threshold for this re registration for the service provider has to be still continued to be this 20 lakhs and for the special category states the threshold limit will be continued as a 10 lakhs rupees so these are the things that has been talked recently with respect to this 32nd gst council meeting and the last topic is the main topic this competitive populism this our modern democracy is basically laid on the claim of this popular, popular sovereignty that is people is the ultimate king of this uh, modern democracy and apart from that this populism this modern democracy makes this populism as one of the important thing to gain a power so this populism is nothing but it is a political approach that deliberately attempt to appeal to the people so instead of taking a productive steps this modern democracy of populism made more appealing steps to the people so that it will have a vote bank politics so this competitive populism is nothing but it is making between the political parties of how much populism that is how much popular oriented schemes they will be announced to attract the people rather than having a structural based changes it will just to make attract the people so that it will gain a votes so nothing much more that other than this votes this populism competitive populism will be targeted at and the major nature of this competitive populism is the first thing is it will promise the individual benefits over the social benefits so it will target each and every individual they will get one rupee rise or they will get the form loan waiving they will get a free power these kind of individual benefits it will be targeted at much faster level and this will give much preference to this individual goods rather than the social goods like road connections or much other thing will take a back seat in this competitive competitive populism and apart from this this competitive populism makes a obstacle the biggest obstacle obstacle to the good governance because good governance people will started to focus on the social goods as a much priority than the individual goods because as a society social goods is started to get much more important in the policy making then it will benefit the inclusive people that is much more downtrodden people will be get benefited but this populism will make not to be benefited for this much downtrodden people 
it will have just a vote bank politics only apart from that this will have this competitive populism will target only for a short term political gain that will definitely going to lead to a long term economical drawback that it will obstacle it will create much more long term economical problems as this kind of a populism schemes will no, do not produce any productive assets so it will not give any productive revenue generation so it just come from a revenue expenditure but now uh, re productive revenue assets will be produced as per this populism schemes and apart from this so what is the impact of this having a populism schemes is first thing is it will reduce the state's capacity so each and every state depends on started to depend on the central and each and every gender, uh, revenue generation capacity of the state will be reduced if the populism take a front seat in the political agenda because many mo more of this middle class people started to exit try to come out of this tax benefit, tax circle because they used to think that if they are, we are giving the tax money to the state then state is going to have this populism schemes only thereby it is not going to benefit the whole society at a much faster level so they have started to try to go out of this tax benefits tax circle so it will reduce the state's capacity to generate the tax revenue so that is the first thing so if the state's capacity started to reduce then the state cannot invest much in this that capital human capital so they will not spend much amount of money in this human skilling population or skilling or as in education or health infrastructures of the people so this weakening of a state capacity will lead to poor infrastructures or poor investment in the human capital and apart from that it will lead tend to increase in this corruption also because people started to reduce their power when they started to go behind this competitive populism schemes so they will started to feel less power in this populism schemes so they that leads to this corruption at much higher level and apart from that it will lead to reduce increase this red tapism also so government started to get much powerful than the people if this populism is become the political agenda of uh, all the state or the political parties in the state so that is the first thing that we have to curtail because this competitive populism is started to make people as a less power and this government who is in the power will get the more powerful and apart from the things what we have to need to do to reduce this competitive populism the first thing is this our election has to be move towards issue oriented thing and the participatory democracy has to be promoted then only it will make the people to be think whether this political party is properly handle the issue or not what the solution they are going to give in this issues they will be started to understand it rather than having this populist schemes they have to go for this issue oriented political elections and apart from this this will lead to a democracy that is much more vibrant democracy as well as it will lead to a de responsive democracy that may more people started to involve in the decision making process of the government and apart from that it will lead the populism the will not lead to a structural changes while what we need to have is each and every political party has to be think about what are the structural changes they wanted to have in the society based on that uh, if they started to convince the people then people will started to think what are the structural changes really this political party have dream to do what is the vision of the political parties that they will do in the future this can be think only when the political parties started to address the structural changes that we needed in the society then only it will lead to a sustainable income increase otherwise it will just this political parties giving a few amount of money for this just one elections or some loan waiving will not have a substantial increase in this income of the people so to double the farmers income or to double the middle class income people or low vulnerable people below poverty line people then it has to be sustainable increase the income for that it need to address this structural changes what that society needs to have and apart from this to have a mature democracy the political parties have just to justify how they will find the finances financial resources to fund the these kind of this power schemes then only the people can understand that from where this money is going to spend in this schemes then only they can think that whether the the scheme is productive that much productive to get money from this kind of a taxes amounted so this will have a much more transparency and accountability of the political parties to the voters that will give, give much more accountability to the voters and apart from that this competitive service delivery is much more important thing that the so our society is lagging at a lot so this political party started to have instead of have competitive populism they started to have competitive service delivery then it will be lead the society at to be a much faster level because this competitive service delivery is one of the thing that is the society is needed at right now so the examples that is the lead to a much more positive effect in india is we have improvement of a pds especially in this chatisgarh state and apart from this this incentives of agriculture farmers in this madhya pradesh shows that one of the 
important thing that service delivery we have in India in achieved. And apart from that, this kerosene free drive in Haryana and the power sector reforms in the Gujarat shows that this sufficient of the good efficient of service delivery will make a people to be move at much faster level and thereby increase the income of the people at a sustainable level. So each and every time the government need not to give money for the people to survive. They themselves will give earn money to for the survival. Only thing is we need to do is how efficiently we can deliver the service to the people. So for example, the health service, then education service and infrastructure service, how qualitatively the government can service to the people. This will make the people to utilize their resources properly and thereby earn the money for themselves. This will make the people as a self-help is the best help rather than depending on the government to each and every time to improve their life. So for example, they need not to want to struggle for this loan waiving or free power struggles. So they themselves will be move at a much faster level if the government started to focus on this efficient service delivery system rather than going for this competitive populism system. And apart from this, this efficient distribution is one of the things that we have to focus on because much of this US or European countries of a developed countries, they started to give distribution right now only. Earlier, most of the things when the state's capacity is very low, they will put a very limited tax amount and they will reduce this distribution of the state capacity to the people. So now only they started to give more and more pension schemes or other schemes. While India is at a unique path of even at the independence period itself, when we have a very poor maturity in the democracy, we started to give voting rights to the, all the people and we have very less tax to GDP ratio. So it shows that we have very less amount of a tax revenue generation. But in spite of that, state is trying to have redistribute this tax amount to the people. So how efficiently they are redistributing is one of the things that India needs to learn a lot from other countries because rather than having a proper redistribution, if we started to have more and more schemes, it will give money to this coffer, this will give money to this rich people only. So what we need to have to have efficient redistribution is, first thing is we have to reduce this exclusion errors. That is this people who are rich people will not come under this, uh, this benefit of schemes and people who are poor sh should not move away from this benefits of the schemes. So that in exclusion errors and the inclusion error has to be reduced down. And apart from this, the leakage has to be properly curtained. So more and more online system has to be introduced and that way it will reduce this corruption and red tapeism and that way reduce the leakage. So if properly this exclusion error, inclusion error and leakage is handled, then only there will be efficient redistribution. So a state, each and every state has to be, think about how efficiently they can redistribute this state income to the people. So if a state's predominant role is to be redistribution alone, then most of the middle class people will try to exit from the tax circle. So they will think that whatever money we are giving to the government, then it will going to be a popular schemes and thereby it's going to benefit only this rich people only, not even the poor people. Then the people, middle class people will start to fly off from this tax, uh, tax circle. So tax giving nature will be reduced among this middle class people. So to avoid that, what we need to do is, we have to have proper efficient redistribution system and proper competitive service delivery system. If both things is properly handled at each and every manner, then it will lead to have more and more middle class people enter into this tax revenue generation circle so that it will benefit the society at much faster level also. So it will give an inclusive development as well as the sustainable economic development in India. So this is one of the important things that we have to notice in the upcoming elections. So whether this competitive populism is taking at the front seat or this competitive service delivery and redistribution system is taking the front seat makes this next election to be a one of the important thing in the Indian history. With that thing, we will end today's conversation. Thank you. Have a nice day. Like and share, comment on this channel.